Hey there, everybody. I want to make a video for you on exception handling. It's not too long of a subject. Uh, we have a standard exception class. And uh, it's, it's something we use. We're going to be mostly using the what. That's pretty much what, all you need to know from here. For this class, you can learn more stuff as you're going. Uh, and it allows us to throw exceptions. So Redden has a, a video up, short video up, if you want to watch it. I'm going to go over some similar stuff and go over some more. I've copied this code and pasted it into my work area. And we're just going to take a quick run through it, look at it real quick. I added include exception because uh, there's more stuff you can do with it. Uh, I need to look into more into using it. it. It's easy to create your own exceptions, though. Uh, it requires something new. It's called the try catch block. What we do is we, whatever we think might generate an error, we put it in, in the try block. If it does generate an error, we throw it out, throw the error to the, do the error part in the catch. Uh, and that's where we'll have like C outs. Uh, I've been trying to tell you guys, don't put C outs in functions. We don't want that. We want it to be uh, reusable. Uh, and so not having C outs in the, the functions work, but you can have C outs in the functions as throw, throwing an exception, as we'll see here. This program asks us to do quotient division, Numer enter a numerator, enter a denominator. We'll come down and take a look at their, their function. And it says if numerator equals zero and denominator equals zero, throw the exception. It's an in the indeterminate form, zero, zero. If it's just the denominator equals zero, throw exception, cannot divide by zero. If neither of those passes, it returns the quotient. So let's take a look at how, what happens when we run it. We can do regular division just fine. If I try to divide by zero, it gives me the error message note that having it throw an exception is effectively like using a break in the function. So anytime an exception is thrown, the function has a break, a free break put in. And so it, it returns. And as soon as a, an error is found, the rest of the try loop doesn't go on. Notice we didn't have a C out you got answer here. There's nothing of that nature here. Let's do that a little bit better. We, we broke it with end of five divided by zero. It went straight to the error message in the catch. This was bypassed. As was returning the actual quotient because it doesn't exist. And we'll see, we can do the other one, do zero divided by zero. Okay. The key is you have to tell it what the error is. You have to insert information. So I'm going to include vector. Just give you a quick, like, couple examples. Uh, do I? I don't need. To, I don't need to comment that out. I'm going to comment out this though. And we'll do vector int. Uh, we'll call it a. And we will push back. I don't know. Forty-five. We'll push back. 13, we'll push back 7. Okay, we'll even push back 15.4. Okay. Now we're going to do a little try block here. Uh, try... And I get the catch.
I'm going to throw it past the exception as an object. If I pass the exception as the object, uh, because exceptions are objects, it's a data type. Exception is a data type, so it's an object. So it's it's cheaper to pass it as an as the address. So here we'll do a little like I don't know. See out. Enter an index. Oh, I got N and D already. Let's just use those. C and N. Uh, C out the value. Uh, we got A. We can use brackets for vectors. I'm so used to doing I for that index. And we'll do that in here. We got to put an error here. See how E dot what? E what? So what goes and grabs the error? Let's see what we got here. Let me give it a let me give it a run through. Let's see what we got. So I can ask it to tell me what's in three. I'll say six. We didn't have six objects in the vector. Oh, I broke it. Why? There you go. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, I know why. It broke it. Uh, so now check this out. We're so used to using the brackets, but I told you we've talked about having the at. What happens if I do the same thing with at? We saw that it broke. A bracket N. Now what happens if I tell it to do the same thing here? Error, invalid vector subscript. So when we use a dot at, we access the exceptions already pre-built into the vector. I don't know if, do I need that to have that happen? Let's give it a try. No, we didn't need that. So vector has errors already preloaded into it. So if we use at rather than the bracket, we will be able to do errors. Uh, this works for other things. Uh, let's do like, I'm gonna make a function here. We'll call it uh, bad recursion. Pass it a string. And you know what? I'll do proper setup. I'll go and put it below. Let's say string x equals, hey, what's up? Do you even lift rope? And we'll say arg equals arg plus x. That does concatenation. And we will return arg. So we should be able to see, oh, no, no, not return arg, return bad recursion arg. So this will keep passing something even bigger.
We'll come up here. See that out real quick. Damn it. Well, bad recursion. Uh, pancake. Pancakes with peanut butter and maple syrup rock. And I didn't put in an error. So we we really fuck it up. We piss it off. We kept adding shit. This was like when we were doing stacks, recursion. There was no there was no base case. So this was deliberate. I have no base case. Where is it? So nothing stopping the recursion. So let's let's put in something that'll stop the recursion. Uh, maybe like if our dot size is greater than I don't know, greater than not less than a thousand. Uh, we'll throw the exception. Blew the stack, bro. That's all we need. Now we have an exception. If it gets too big, it will break. Stop. It tells me that there was something wrong and the thing was there. So you can use it as a way to stop recursion. And notice I'm having C outs in my functions. Uh, well, this is a bad example. because Yeah, this is a bad example, but we're doing them in exception throwing. So we're gonna do try, you do use a try catch block. You put the thing that might have an error in try and catch down here. Now you might be thinking this might work really well on uh, catching like if they need to enter a an integer and they enter a character, a letter. Entering a letter, it will turn it to the ASCII integer so it doesn't actually stop it. It won't catch errors that we think are errors if it's not an error in the computer. That's really important to know. What we think are errors, like using a char and an int, isn't an error to the computer. It converts the char to an int with the ASCII code. So some things like you the uh and so that that was that uh you had another lab in here i want to go take a look at with you your next lab next Design a regular c type function that validates a user id and an email and it's a whitelist of Valid extensions. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, I, I actually thought about it a little bit more. I don't, I'm not going to do it off this one. I'm going to use uh, the lab we did on mapping. And I, it was the lecture we did and we had in person and we 
we created half able to morph that and turtle wrecker and then we had the display function and like if I try to display someone that's not there, like I just say bold, it fucking breaks. So it's like, this is bad. We don't want that. So maybe the display function needs to be in a try loop. So we'll do try. And then catch. Exception E. Let's go with arg. See out. Arg wood. That's not what I wanted in there. That was fine. It was this. So on player temp display, we need to come down and, and edit display. Nope, that's not what it was wrong. It was, let's see, player temp. Okay, so it takes in temp. That's in my map. I have an iterator down here anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna put an iterator in. Let's throw in an iterator. Like before. And we'll do it equals Did map have the find function. I think it does. ITR equals it's a pointer, so let's do recursive. Or not recursive, uh dereference. And that's dereference player. Okay, I edited it a little bit in a pause. I, it occurred to me, you know, it had a person pointer, but my map was not a pointer. So I don't need to dereference the map. So I'm just going to do ITR equals player find temp. It's going to look for the name. Uh, and then if it doesn't, it the way find works. In fact, let's go look at it real quick. Map. The map find searches the container for an element with a key equivalent to K and returns an iterator to it if it found. Otherwise, it returns an iterator to map N. So, we can use this to our advantage here. If, so let's think about it. If it doesn't find it, 
it will return uh, player.n, which is not the last player. It's a null, it's a null pointer. It's a null object. Uh, so we want to check it for that. If ITR equals player.n, throw exception. Are not found. I don't even need to do an else to do this because it's it's not gonna when the, when the, the error happens it breaks the try loop. It skips the next step. Remember we saw that with divide? It skips the next step. So uh, I moved that inside there. Let me comment that out. We didn't need that. Do we have anything else in here that we liked? No. So we can put that in a, a in a while loop if we wanted to. Let's make sure it works. Uh, J E F F E E E. Player not found. So it kicks back the error. If we had this in a loop, uh, do. while uh, checker equals true. Let's make a Boolean called checker. And we'll just say checker equals false at the start of each one, or checker equals true. And maybe I'll throw this in braces. No, nope, I don't even need braces there because the third exception is going to break it out of that. Does it break it out of the whole loop? Does it break it out of the whole try or will it break it out of the, the first do thing? Let's give it a try. That's never going to end. I need to have a way to turn it false. We'll start it off as false. And we'll, we'll definitely put this in and we'll make checker true before the exception stop. So it'll keep asking until we get what we want. No, it didn't. It just fucking totally kills the try. It does not do the do while. So the do needs to go outside the try. And we'll 
tab that in. Okay. Hold the. There we go. So we could make a like a player register function. So let's do that. Let's do this. Uh, register, register player. If we type register, it actually sometimes gets mad. We will pass it in a string argument. String arg f, string arg l, uh, int arg g for gender, and int arg h. Bool for gender. You know, I'm going to do it right here just to make this video a little bit shorter. It does not like register player. Uh, oh, there, now it does. It's okay. So what we're going to do is do map. String, maybe we need to pass it in the map. So that should, we'll pass in the map. String person. Uh, we'll call that arg m. Okay, so we got the map inside. Uh, so we'll say map string person pointer, make an iterator in here. Uh, if now we gotta just set the iterator equal to it. iterator equals arg m dot find we have to pass it a key too So that'll put the pointer uh, to the person in the map that has the name arg key. And so we want to have it do, so like if no one is found, it will enter as normal. That's what we want. So I'll just copy this. I think maybe we should pass this by reference so that it affects it. Okay, I did a little edit editing. I passed it as a pointer. Uh, that way we could modify it directly 
dereference it to find it. And now I've set it up so that we assign. Uh, if no one is found, we can put it in. Now we need the throw exception thing. If it equals equals map dot or arg m dot n. Throw exception person already found. Now let's test that. Come down here and so we're going to pass it. The player as a pointer. Then we're going to give it our new name. Let's see, this will be James. I don't need the void. This will be bond. Oh, the first one is the player's name. Uh, 007. And we have bond. God damn it. Uh, he's a male and I don't know, 35. As a player. What is my error? Okay, I got it worked out. I put, made the person a temp. I don't know if that's necessary. I'm going to check that in a second. Uh, and I put the register player down here in the try loop. It needs to be in the try loop to work. Uh, I think I have a problem with the way the code's working right now. Uh, when I run it, it says player already found, which means it's doing this part right here. And my logic up here is wrong. This if is if it does not equal n. That would make more sense. If it does not equal n, then the player was already found. That was a flaw in my logic there. Now I think fixing that should we'll fix it. So we pass it as a pointer. I've got it. Passing the address of player. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, we check Hefe. And okay, the code works. Now we'll check for 007. 
Bam. And oh, now we gotta test the registering a player that doesn't work. So I'm going to put it here and say, do it again. So what, where, where we're at right now is in the try loop, we've registered James Bond once. Now we're going to ask about James Bond. And it's going to say he's not there. And then it gets down to here and it tries to register him again and it causes a problem. So register player, the way we've got it set up, takes in a map as a pointer because we want to be able to change the map in the main, takes in the key, change, takes in the the value, in this case, the value is a person. We could have passed in a person directly, but I had it pass in the name and stuff like that. Uh, then we go through and we set up the temporary player. We look for the player. If he, the player is found, IT does not equal the end. And it will throw an exception. If the player isn't found, IT will equal the end. The exception doesn't get thrown and it registers the player. So you can do something similar to this in your homework. That's kind of like how you want to do it. Uh, it just takes some work on doing the exceptions and stuff. All right. Peace.